Hey guys, what's going on? It's Brian coming to you once again from the TST Industries Garage. Today we have an install video related to this 2018 Honda CB650F. Now the reason that it is so dismantled and we're presenting it to you this way is because this is actually what it takes to get our TST flasher relay into this bike. The ECU is located in a questionable spot, I'll say, uh, and along with that, the relays went down there with it. So that is going to be underneath the tank. You're going to have to remove both of the side fairings, your tank and all of the pieces that attach to it will have to come off just to get this little relay in. So we wanted to start this video out in this, with the bike in this state, just so you guys really know what you're getting into before you get into it. If you guys wanna proceed with this video, go ahead, follow along. I'll show you all the steps you need to get your TST flasher relay in there so that we can avoid a hyper flash, which is what your bike is going to do when you do install some LED style signals on your motorcycle. We, got, we went ahead and put our BL6 style signals up in the front and the rear, so we have induced that hyper flash, but we are going to remedy that with our TST flasher relay. Now I do wanna to touch on one thing. When we do put our TST flasher relay in this bike, there's a very strange feature, but it does allow your signals to be activated without the motorcycle actually being on. It kind of skips a logic loop in the bike's computer system and allows that switch to activate your signals at any given point. If you feel like you might be prone to leaving your signals on for some reason when you walk away from the bike, this may be something that you want to consider. You might want to go the other route, which is possibly either some load balancing resistors, or maybe if this is an issue for you, you might want not want to do LED style signals at all. If you do want to proceed with this installation, follow along. All right guys, so our first step is going to be to remove these side panels. They're gonna come off as one big piece. We're gonna do both sides. So we start with the top fastener here. We want an M5 Allen key. Keep your fasteners off to the side and definitely try to take note of which fastener goes where. I'll go over it in detail when we reassemble, but do try to keep note. So the next fastener is gonna be underneath the fairing here. And the very last one is gonna be up in the front, almost up near your radiator. Keeping my hardware safe. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. So at this point, we're gonna to have to lift this up and off. There are some friction fasteners, some push style fasteners in there that we're gonna to have to overcome the friction of, but there we have it, comes off fairly easily. So at this time, I'm actually going to take the hardware that I know goes in certain locations, just kind of keep it there tentatively as I place this off to the side. All right, so we're gonna repeat the process on the other side. All right, so our next step is going to be to actually take the seat off. Set that off to the side as well. Now, as you guys could see, I actually grabbed a 10 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter open-ended wrench. I'm gonna need that in a second, but we're gonna start with the fasteners here on the front of the tank, one on either side. I'm gonna have to break those loose. Pull that fastener out. Make sure that the little sleeve is either gonna stay put or pull it out if you want to keep track of it. Repeat on the other side. Again, set that off to the side. So at this time that we're gonna grab a hold of that open slash closed ended wrench. We're gonna make sure that we're loosening. And then the rear mount of our tank We'll have to break that free. Let me grab an extension. So holding that other side tight, we can go ahead and break loose. All right, so once we've broken this loose, we can go ahead and remove this nut by hand, grab our washer as well. And with that loose, we can actually go ahead and take this side panel, it's held on by a little Velcro patch right there. So we're gonna work our thumb or fingers down a little ways, 
try to pry up, you'll get it to pop off. That's all we need it to do. Just release it a little bit. Repeat the same on the other side. So with my rag in hand, I can go ahead and set that down beneath to catch. We're gonna spill a little bit of fuel here. So we're gonna disconnect one of our breather tubes, taking the little clamp off of this one, spinning it down, get it past the little bulge on this nipple. Pull that off, and here we go. We want to do the electrical connector too, which is down beneath the tank. That one, probably hard to see, but there's a little tab right on top. You just press down with your thumb, pops right off. And now here's the last step. This little green lock, you can push down with your fingers. There we go, we've released it. So now we want to pull, we're gonna pull this tube back off catching any of the fuel that dumps out right in our cloth right here. So there we have it. We'll leave that down on the bike. We can go ahead and set this back down. Make sure we don't catch our fairings on the way down. Get it in the right position. That way this rear bolt, when we want to remove it, has the least amount of resistance on it. Still going to take a little bit of tugging here. Should be able to get it with some pliers actually. Just wiggle it out a little bit. Might get caught on that rubber grommet that it goes through, causing a little bit of friction. Should come out with too much, without too much hassle. So at this time, our tank is actually totally disconnected. We could go ahead and pick it up off the motorcycle, lifting the front first, then sliding the rear out. All right guys, so with our tank off, Go ahead and proceed. We're gonna move our fuel line off to the side. Keep that rag kind of wrapped around it if you have it there, just in case any extra fuel decides to make its way out. Go ahead and move that routing hose off to the side. You'll see this hose is clipped into some locations. We're gonna re wanna remove it from those. Push that off to the side as well. And you'll see we have two little push fasteners here. Push the center in, and you should be able to lift up on the outside of it. Maybe lift that a little bit. Yep, there we go. Take those, set them off to the side. You'll want them back later. So at this time that we could actually go ahead and try to articulate this cover up. It's a pretty tricky little cover, and there's some wires that get in your way. But if you go back and out this direction, should actually be able to pop that cap out. So as we move in that direction still, we will eventually work our way out of here. There's a small tab that's actually keeping it in place. You can see that there. Just gotta push that tab over the little locking feature that it has, thus exposing our ECU and our relays. We wanna work with this guy here. That's our signal relay. So we're gonna pull that up and out. It's gonna be a little hard for me to show you guys this one, but there's a feature on the bottom of the plug that if you actually press down on, you'll release your relay. So now that we have that plug exposed, you can actually see what I'm talking about. There's this little tab right there. As I squeeze it, you can see it will unlock. So. We'll now wanna grab our TST relay. And from that OEM relay, we're gonna to wanna to take that little rubber sleeve that came with it, set that relay off to the side, keep it in your spares box. Take that little sleeve, and hopefully with a little bit more finesse than me, slip it back over our TST relay. Sometimes you gotta lift that tab up to give it enough clearance, there we go. And at this point, we're gonna plug this portion of our relay back down onto that OEM plug. Gonna to wanna to try to navigate some of these extra wires that we had to induce here. Just kinda of push them down underneath. There's not too much. And then locate that guy back onto that little locking tab. Not locking, but the locating tab, rather, that keeps that in place. 
All right, so with our TST flasher relay in, we're gonna to wanna to put this shield back over our electronics box area. So we're gonna locate this tab on that little lock feature that we had to remove it from. Try, if you can, to get everything kind of into place simultaneously. It will be a little difficult, but with a little bit of finesse, you should be able to get it. Get that plate to drop beneath this wire loom here. There we go, pop it back into place. We're gonna to wanna to take those two fasteners, the push fasteners that we removed, put them back down, press their little tab. Gonna to want to relocate that hose that we had to remove. There we have it. All right, so at this time, we can actually go ahead and grab our tank again. We're gonna throw that bolt through the back and then start to reattach some of the things that have connected to the tank. All right, so just kind of lightly putting the tank down. We don't want to possibly crush any of these connectors, but just kind of setting it there for the time being. Grab that long rod that you had removed from the back of the tank mount. Push your tank up into a location where you could get that through. At this point, we can articulate the tank up. I'm gonna do my electrical connector first because it's the lowest one. So that's gonna connect down back underneath. You're gonna hear a little pop. I'm gonna do the fuel next. So articulate that back up. Whoops. There we have it. Once you're over that little kind of like nipple in the tube. You wanna push that lock feature back down. It's at this time that we could go ahead and take one of our breather tubes. Watch that panel. The more you connect, the closer down the tank has to be. So sorry if your view is getting a little obstructed at the moment. The last thing we're gonna do is that other small breather tube. I'm gonna get that up onto, there we go. And then just take that small clip, flex it out and get it up over that tube as well. All right, so at this time we could go ahead and drop our tank back down. Make sure that we're not catching anything. There we go, seem to be in the right location. Go ahead and stick these side panels back to that Velcro. So grabbing those fasteners that were from the front of the tank, we can go ahead, insert that back in. Your tank's probably not located correctly right now, so you might have to articulate up a little bit, kind of play around. You could even see where you need to go. There we go. Hand thread it first, then switch to a tool. Just making sure we're not cross-threading any components of our frame here. Tighten that all the way down. Do the same on the other side. So we could go ahead and switch to our ratchet. Make sure we're tightening. Go ahead and bottom those out. Give them about a quarter of a turn after bottom out. They have a little rubber spacer there, so that's gonna help keep that in place. At this time, we're gonna to wanna to grab the washer and the nut that we removed from the rear mounting point of the tank. Start to hand thread that on. It will have a lock feature on it, so it might be a little difficult to get that all the way on. So we're gonna switch back to our box wrench and socket combination. So we bottom out and then again, a quarter, maybe even just an eighth of a turn. Not too, too much there, guys. You're just clamping down through some rubber and some tank mounts. So this time we could actually go ahead and throw our seat back on and then we're just gonna have to throw those side panels on and we could go ahead and finish this up. So seat is on.
All right, guys, so with our bike reassembled, you can go ahead and start it up now, check your signals, make sure everything's working. Make sure after you took your tank off, you didn't possibly throw like an FI light or something like that. I know from personal experience, I took my tank off once through an FI light. I was very confused for quite a while, but I had just pinched one of those hoses that we had taken off the tank. So make sure you don't have anything like that going on before you get out and go for your very first ride. But otherwise, guys, if you wanna pick up any of the components on this bike, I know there's a couple things I didn't touch on. We have some BL6 signals. That's the reason that we had to install that relay, but we do have some other components such as an axle slider, uh, engine slider, and we do have a fender eliminator for the rear of this bike. If you wanna pick any of those products up, visit our website at tstindustries.com. If you want to check out more videos pertaining to this bike or maybe any other bikes, definitely give our YouTube channel a visit. Hit subscribe if you like the content. We'll catch you guys next time.